Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of How I Trade. Uh, welcome, Brandon McCloy, good mate of mine from the USA. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good, man. How are you today? Yeah, really good. It's hot where I am, but um, I'll cope. I probably won't melt while, I, while we're on this on this chat for, <laughs> you know, 20 minutes or so. But um, yeah, it's so good to catch up with you again, my friend. And um, yeah, I'm really keen to find out the How I Trade and How I Trade strategy being How I Trade EM EMAs with the scalping. So uh, yep. Mate, take it away. Sure. So just to basically put it in a summary right quick, um, what I'm doing is, at least from what I've discovered, what I'm calling it is called an EMA cradle strategy. Um, and basically the shortest way to think about it is imagine somebody like a person cradling a baby in their arms, and rocking it back and forth. Um, essentially, that's what price is doing. And that's what EMA is doing to the candles while you're looking at it on a chart. And the quickest way, I already have something charted out that I threw up in our chats earlier today, is this right here. Um, let me go ahead and pull up a brush. So basically what you can see is it's a sweeping motion. So we have a 25 and a 50 EMA that that's what I use as a um, confirmation or to, to give me an idea on what could be happening. I put up a little video um, on YouTube earlier today, and it was basically explaining um, what I'm about to go over right now. And essentially what we're doing is we're trying to wait and watch for momentum to build, whether it's uh, up or down. And when the EMA start to cradle price, regardless on direction, we're looking to hop on in that with the momentum before it takes off. And then we're looking to get out of it right when indecision starts to happen. And this is the easiest way, I guess you can look at it. And it would be this right here. What time frame are we looking at? So this is the one minute time frame. Um, this strategy so far with back testing and um, just having tested it live, it, it seems to work most well on the one minute to three minute time frames. However, it can be used on higher time frames as well, too. It's not just explicitly for scalping. You can use it on hires on the higher time frames, but it does, but patience, you have to have patience because it does take a little bit of, a little bit of time for everything to kind of build up so you can see it. Um, EMAs don't necessarily move as fast on like the four hour or daily time frame as yeah. like they do on the one minute or three minute time frames. Yeah. So back to this part. So basically what we look for is when price is on the verge of breaking out, it's not always a uh, truth to be said like on a breakout granted because we are on the one minute time frame there's a lot of movement a lot of activity i only scout bitcoin this is where i found the strategy but it does work across other time frames or other markets as well too it's not just specifically for crypto so in short story what we look for is a breakout of all four emas i use four different emas so the green line of what you see uh, right here, that's a 25. The blue one is a 50. The yellow one is a 200. And then the red one is an 800 EMA. So essentially so just, what we'd like to... Just ahead. to repeat that. So green is 25, blue is 50, mm -hmm. yellow is 200, and pink yep. is 800. Okay, good. Yep. Yep. And so what we like to see, what I like to see is for all of these EMAs to have space or separation before like the momentum carries up. So this one, in my mind, it, it wasn't ready yet when I shared it as far as the space goes, but we did get an extreme cradle effect. So like I said earlier, this is what we're looking for is for a cradle or a sweeping motion of our 25 and 50 EMAs. And the best way to do it is to enter as close to one of those EMAs as possible, but you want to see some sort of a separation or other confirmations, like whether it's bibs or break and retest or anything of the such, right? It doesn't matter what you're seeing before. What, what I'm looking for is just the cradle and sweeping. Um, and the best way to look at it is like this. So if we just zoom out a little bit, as you can see, right, we're just walking sideways. Not too much is really happening. Then we start at one point in time, brand new day, and we start to consolidate a little bit. So, like I said, it can be on a wedge, flat. It could be off of anything that you're looking at. Um, what we're, like, like I said again, what we're looking for is just a cradle down, 
what we just what I just highlighted. So with what just happened today, we saw a uh, consolidating box for a little bit, just a few hours. This is on the one minute time frame. So and our 200 and 800 EMAs were squeezing together. Right. And when when this red line and this yellow line, when they're close together and price is just ripping through both of them, that's a big like no trade zone. You don't want to trade whenever you see like basically indecision between all the EMAs between price for ranging. You don't want to trade whenever you see that. You want to trade or you want to make a trade when we're when we're pressing like a support or resistance zone and you see a breakout. So much like your uh, previous guest that you had on here, um, we're looking for breakouts. Nest, not, we're looking for breakouts. Yeah. And like I said, you know, it's not necessarily said to be true all the time on this. But when you see like something like this happening now, granted, this first trade may have not have been something to, to give a solid confirmation. But if we remove this and look at this next one right here, much like this first trade, we came from con consolidation, pushed down. We had a little retracement. So right here, all of retracement, push back up. We use our fibs. We can look and see where this retracement is in the total move. Because mind you, again, we are on the smaller time frame. So you have to keep in mind, like you can't look at such a small space as like what, as like what you're seeing now. You have to go on to the larger time frames, get a story, get a picture, know what's happening with price overall before you start diving deep in to find a trade to make. So this could have been something for somebody. Um, right here, we have our separation of the 800 of the 200. We have a crossing right here. We do have some cradling, but right there's not enough separation to tell yet. And if you were to enter whenever this is where the separation is, Right, this move had already happened. So let's go throw our fibs up to here, to here, and see. Okay, so now we lined up with our 50, right? A lot of people, well, just with what we're taught, at least what I've been taught, the 61.8, the 50, and the 38.2 are nice areas of rejection when using fibs as far as a retracement and a total move up or down. And so, right, that's just another confirmation to add. So we have several touches off of the 50 right here, right here. And there's another one in between of all of it right there. And these two over here, I can get it to move back. But so right there, it's straight consolidation, right? We don't, we don't break above, we don't break below. We're just consolidating up and down, right? So another thing to look for is, so after that, we have our separation beforehand, so that's confirmation number one. We have several touches off of the 50 with our fibs on this move down. Now what we're looking for is for the cradle effect to take place. So again, where we're consolidating is no entry at all. Like you don't want to enter when price is just consolidating any, anywhere for that fact. So what I'm waiting for is exactly what I described just a few minutes ago, which is this little cradling effect. And again, all it looks like is just prices sweeping down. So a confirmation for me to re-enter on this, obviously the first one being FIBS. The second one would be the break of the EMA. But the third and strongest confirmation that you could possibly ask for is the break or is like a high volume break. So some, another indicator I use is called PVSRA which is just a volume indication that's pushed onto the candles rather than what you would see down at the bottom of the screen. And they're so, color coded. So the ones at the bottom are effectively not used for your strategy? No, uh-uh. Okay. It, it's, used, it's used for just finding maybe divergence on higher time frames. But yep. as far as the cradle strategy is confirmed, yep. concerned, no, I don't use it at all. Okay, so you're just all, looking so at momentum coming in the colored candles. And that's why you've got the colored candles, yeah? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a decent, so if we're looking at this area right here with this long or this short box that I have set up, where this entry is, when you see this, it where it was probably wasn't the best entry, but this is where in my mind would be the best entry. So we have our cradle formation coming down. Right, price is just sweeping down, or these EMAs are sweeping down, and it's still being held 
by our 25 or 50 EMA. And the goal of it is, is to enter as close as you can. So when you start seeing those high volume pushes or pumps, you want to look for the break and retest when that starts to happening, when that starts to happen. So when you have it lined up with a box or a support or resistance and you get the break with the volume on either side, then that's when you want to start building your bias of, okay, this looks like a long or this like a short. In this case, it looks like a short. We have our, let me get off of this. We have a consolidating range right here. We have a top, 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 bottom, bottom, another little bottom, but we're just tearing through the EMAs. And a good indicator, like I was just saying, is this push down. And then we have a little pause. The entry would be on this little pause right there, right? Because we have our volume. It's not a blue or pink candle. It's a solid red candle, you know, vice versa. If it was green, you know, looking for longs. If it was short, you'd look for shorts. In this case, we're looking for shorts. It's another clue is where we just came from. So if we look back, obviously, right, this whole move, let me move this down right here right? We just got pumped down. So another thing to think of too is like just basic formations or basic patterns, right? So we, another thing is like a horseshoe pattern, right? Start push down or a sharp push down, retrace, and then another pump right back to, or another push down to where it just hit. So that's another thing too. The best thing about this strategy is that you just don't have to look for EMA cradles. You can line it up to any type of pattern, wedge, flag or anything and the we're only looking for price to cradle the candles on a breakout of it so it's essentially i guess a breakout strategy but you know you want to line it up with other confirmations to know like hey we're here this is this lines up with this we have all these other stack confirmations like fibs support and resistance and trend and all that stuff and again, it's only a, an EMA pattern that we're looking for. And it's just what I highlighted. It's this right here. And um, it works longs, so it works shorts. I want to show a quick um, quick example on a four-hour time frame just to show like, hey, you can use this elsewhere. It doesn't just have to be for scalping. So just while you're finding that, um, just a note for anyone watching this, obviously this takes a lot of experience. It takes a lot of back testing. It takes a lot of, um, I guess you could say, you know, trial and error. Um, yep. Obviously, there's not a 100% win rate. Um, yep. So it's important that you do your own, um, uh, I guess, education, do your own back testing, and definitely don't put any money toward this until such time as you feel that your back testing and your education matches your skill set. Yep. It's also important to note that on a one minute time frame, you have uh, high. Uh, reward uh, when especially if you're losing using leverage but you've also got high risk and you've also got um, the you've got to have the ability to sustain the nervousness that comes with trading on a minute time frame and if you miss your entry don't go chasing it because you've literally got 60 yep. seconds to enter based on your yep. uh, candle so you've got 60 seconds to execute that trade to make sure that you're a bit of a gun when it comes to navigating whatever trading platform you're using as well Yep. The best, the best advice I can say is if you're looking to do this and this is the type of strategy that you want to do it, when you, when you have the idea that this could happen, you need to have your, your position size ready. You need to have all that stuff ready in whatever platform that you're ready to use. Because again, like Damien just said, you got 60 seconds to execute this trade within that 60 seconds, you can completely miss your entry and ruin the whole risk to reward with it. It's a very quick moving thing. It does take a lot of practice and a lot of patience, a lot of trial and error. But again, it doesn't all have to cost money. You can throw up a short box, a, 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 what about a short box, a long box, and test it out that way. That's just straight back testing with it. Um, and just to show uh, what it looks like on higher time frames, this, and let me go ahead and draw it up here. Okay, so here is another very good example that I like to show with um, with the strategy. So basically, um, what we want to see is 
right, this strategy in my mind typically really works the best on like the second or third pump. It's hard to kind of get it on the initial breakout, but on the one minute or three minute time frames, it looks exactly like another breakout in retrospect to the larger time frames. But when we go on to the higher time frames, you can clearly see it does kind of do the same thing. And this is with a long now, not a short. So, right, we have our push up, kind of walking up, push back down. Price never broke the green line, which again is a 25 or the 25 EMA, right? We have a little wick down, but we didn't break any further down than that wick. So we wick down, push back up, kind of rode the 25 EMA in this little zone right here. But then we push back up more in decision. Guess you can call this little morning star right here. Depends on who you are, depends on what you're looking at. And with that, an entry on the higher time frames would have more than likely been on the close of this or near the beginning of this candle, like a couple minutes or hours into the candle when you see it breaking out. Again, that's why I refer to it as a breakout though too, because you will see it break out, at least what I have seen is I've seen it break out on retracements. So if we go back to that idea of breaking out on retracements, right? We have this push up. It's not necessarily the retracement we would like to see with FIBS on the four hour because we only hit the 23.6 uh, reversal area or zone. Um, again, that's not necessarily within like the, the three major reversal areas on FIBS. However, though, if the level, if price respects a certain level, it doesn't break it, it respects it and doesn't break it. Not everything's going to follow directly to what like you're educated or taught. This is why having the experience comes back into play because, you know, anything can happen. You may have been taught one thing, but it can go the other direction. Anything can come up all of it. The most important idea that I have is just learn the patterns, learn what you're looking at. And then make your trades based off of note, like what you're looking at and stacking your confirmations. So when you hear people like make sure you have three or four confirmations, all you're literally doing is just looking at like, OK, so in this example, pump up, consolidate, hit this level again. Price is starting to ride this 25 EMA. OK, and then we're looking like candle formations, right? Another confirmation level, eat morning star off the EMA off of this push up with this little retracement with high volume on this retracement, but then nothing else happens when price is pushing back up. And, you know, you just want to stack everything together. The more confirmation that you can stack, the better off that you'll be as far as making any of these trades. But, you know, this cradle does work on the higher time frames. And again, it's there's one specific movement I'm looking for. And it's this little sweeping motion. Doesn't matter where it's coming from. Doesn't matter what, like, it, it just doesn't matter. If we're seeing that and you can stack your confirmations anywhere, then it, it, it could work. It could work. The probability comes out higher than what it normally would be, or than just not knowing, you know, where to enter or what to do and anything of the such. And, um, and is there yeah, always, yeah. there's also one on the, on the bottom of that push down? Yeah. Yeah, down the bottom there. So to the left, yeah, there. Yeah, um, so so let me similar you, kind of similar kind of movement. Yeah, it's a similar kind of movement, very similar. However, it what make this is why I like I like looking at this on the smaller time frames is because if I don't see that eight hundred EMA necessarily below the yellow line, so the red yeah. line below the yellow line as everything's crossing up, it, it's it, there's not the probability in my mind just may not be there. It yeah. could be there because we do have three of the four with it. But as far as like profits go, projecting where to take profit, yeah. you're kind of limited to wherever that 800 EMA is because you can clearly see, yeah, we did pause right, right at the 800 EMA, which just so happened to line up with an area with an EQ zone when you look back left. Yeah. And it, it's just that type of stuff that you have to watch out for because as quickly as market as the market can push up, it can drive right back down and everything that you just gained can be lost. Yeah. So the fact that it's above the pink line, which is the 800, you are more confident that it's going to go long. 
Um, yes. Mm -hmm. When, yep. When everything's crossing. So you have your, your smallest number at the top and your largest number EMA at the bottom, then yeah, those are indications for me for longs. And when it's vice versa, when the 800 is at the top, yeah. like what you see right here. So like an example of this, the cradle forming right there, 800 is all the way up here. So we yeah. have decent separation. We just rejected twice off of the 200 EMA. And then we start seeing the cradle form after those rejections right there. We have a crossing as well of the two of the 25 and 50 EMA. So then at that point, you want to look for your closest entry, which let's draw another little line right here. So with just what we're looking at, say somewhere in that area. So when we broke down, this spot could have been a retest right yeah. there. Not only a retest, we, we draw, but we drew back a little close to this 25 EMA. So that could have been an entry right there as well, too, which that is the type of like setup that I would like to look for is we just broke some sort of consolidation. Our EMAs are lined up, whether the 800s at the top or the bottom. And then we have a breakout, a retest, and the retest happens on or near the 25 EMA. And then that's where we're going to look for whether it's a long or a short. That's cool. That's really cool strategy. Now tell me, where do you get out of the trade? So I do it at indecision. Okay. So because of the fact that I trade the one minute time frame, right? There's not a lot of room for air, right? We could we could have a, a, a pause or something like that, but when that pause happens, it may not be guaranteed that it could come back up. So another example, I guess you could say would be in this trade right here. So we wait for our confirmations, right? So we have, get on it. Okay, so we just broke consolidation and we started trending down, price started degrading and we have our EMA cross right here and we have some separation forming while all these candles are respecting the 25 EMA and this falls back to entering as close as you can to it. So we started kind of to pause a little bit. We have this inverted hammer. At that point in time, because we broke, the rest of what happened up here, get rid of this. So if I'm looking to enter at this level, somewhere around it, right? We have several bottoms like right here already. Bottom. And again, this is just a minor area of like support resistance because we're in the one minute time frame it's not your daily support resistance these are just minor eq zones of where price paused bounced off and just kind of go in the other direction so it's best and, to clear your chart before you do it just in case you've got some daily or four hourly uh, lines hanging out there that shouldn't be there you really want to redraw this from scratch yep mm -hmm. okay. yeah so i always always go back and redraw it whether the lines are in the same place all the time, every day, fine, whatever. It's just yeah. a click here and a click there, and that's it. And yep. then you start breaking down into the, into the lower time frame. So the daily, for I use the daily, the four-hour, hourly, 45, 15, and then the three-minute and one-minute. So cool. I break it down into those um, different areas. But let's see if we can get back to it. But as far as exit's concerned, so that's entry right there. The exit would be indecision. So, and you also want to keep in mind too, as far as like, like how fast, how many candles, like the momentum when it falls or when it pumps up. Because if it just straight broke through one level that you were looking at, right, there's obviously nothing really there. Momentum just carried itself way down or way up, right? There's nothing really there. So when it comes to the indecision, it would be at something like this. So when watching this candle form would have been like, okay. And then watching the following candle, right? I don't know if you can really see it, but there is a big old wick to the top side right there. Yeah. So that would have been my first clue. Like, okay, maybe we should start looking to get out because of the fact like price pumped right afterwards and created this large wick. So that tells me indecision could start to form yeah. the next candle you know when you're watching it you would have seen it pump down but again came right back up and more indecision started to form yeah so as far as the exit goes it probably wouldn't end up being 
right up in that area right there, just yep. solely because of the fact we had this pump down, this wick right here, waited again for the next candle to form, and we ended up closing right there. So that to me would have been like, okay, I'm done. I'm out. I don't want any part of this anymore. For yep. all we know, we can reverse. So, And just quickly, how do you set your stop loss? So this is where it gets fun. The stop loss, when you start looking as close as you can to entering off of the EMA, Hold on, I got rid of the wrong thing. Okay. So basically, if we're watching this, right, we just saw this little hammer form right here, rejected right off of um, this little area right here where we validated back. More than likely would have been on, you enter on the close of that or somewhere at the beginning of this if you got in quick enough. And then you set your stop loss just ever so slightly above the previous um like three or four candles okay if in and this is like this is why i'm saying like if you can enter as close as you can to the ema if we are in a true uptrend or downtrend this is what it'll look like so even if you would have entered in at least this is what i saw so even if you would have looked at this right here push up high volume back down pause pause you you go okay enter in here maybe because we had a push down set your stop to the previous high. In this case, it would have been retesting that 800 EMA. So you just want to cover it. You want to cover your EMAs basically because yeah. the way we're trading it, if it breaks it, it's invalidated. You want to get stopped out as quick as possible because you don't want to step your, set it too large because you want to kind of protect your funds too. This is more of, at least I use it with high leverage. So I set it as tight as I can while still probably guaranteeing myself that these EMAs will still be respected, which is why I look for a specific sweeping motion with the EMAs and with the separation of the EMAs as well, too. So I know I'm protected. And even if I do lose, I'm not going to lose that much. And it will take me out as quickly as I entered if I entered in the wrong spot. That's cool. That's that's an awesome breakdown, man. That's so good. Um, so again, I'll repeat that obviously you need to do some back testing. You need to do some research as to what time frame works for you. You need to know what EMAs are. You need to know your, um, trading platform. You know, there's a lot of work before you can get to this standard. However, um, it's very achievable. So guys, um, make sure that you like and subscribe this channel and have a look at Branham's YouTube channel as well, Branham McCoy. Give him a look and give him a shout out and make sure you subscribe to his channel as well. I'll put the link to his um, uh, channel in the comments below so you can jump on his and then and, and you can you can have a look at what he's up to as well. Uh, Branham, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate your time and jumping on here with me and picking your brain. And um, yeah, so I'm sure we'll see Branham with another strategy on the same channel shortly. Man, thank you so much for your time. I, I truly appreciate it. The people watching this, hopefully uh, you're able to pick up some skills from my good man. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me on, man. Very appreciated. Very appreciated. Glad to be able to share this information to others and see what it could possibly do for others. Oh, I know that people in our chat and our group are already using this and they're loving it. So thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for being willing to answer any questions as well. For sure, man. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks, Ike.